Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. All right, we actually ordered two copies. We said let's give one to, to them so you can always have it. Now, I want to just give the very first thing is that chamber music 101, mm -hmm. okay? Very important. Two things that you can immediately improve. One is to give great cues. And cue is a very, very important thing, especially coming from the upper level, but in the real great chamber music group, everybody gives cues. Mm -hmm. And cue is something not only you will play together so much better, as well as cueing the audience what's going on. Okay, so that's really, really important. If you come to the concert on April 15th, you will see we cue all the time, <laughs> all the time. And what that really translates to is actually a sensitivity and a particular directions that you always have to give. And this, not, not only in music. You know, I direct a lot of projects. I can, I usually read a lot from other people's body language, what's going on, okay? So if you come in here, I realize I have two very shy and very nervous students on stage at the moment. Yeah, that's your body language to send out to me. So on April 21st, 22nd, when you're gonna play your concert, that body language has to go away, okay? And it's a good practice for not only for making music, going to a meeting, going to whatever, um, one thing that you could gain from playing chamber music, this is very general, but it's really true. I learned so much from that. If you cue very well, if you read people's body language, if you can assess your environment, you can influence. You can inject energies in there that you will be surprised to find out. If I come on the stage and I talk very, very, and I'm kind of shy, you will feel like there's different magic in there as well. I'm not talking about you always have to go out and be really aggressively promote yourself, but I'm talking about a, a contribution to the room's energy. Now, let's start. Who starts this piece? So you start, right? You each. Okay, now, let's give a good cue. Yeah, now they all know it. Yeah. Excellent. Even just that's another one. You know, for recording, that needs to be cut off. <laughs> yes, okay. So a real cue is not good. Okay. If I want to give very energetic thing, energetic, I want to give props. Yeah, like a good conductor do, does that all the time. You are the now is a group conductor. Whoever is coming in for new melody, that cue has to be very clear. Let's start again. Yes, good, good. Now I'm going to talk about the second thing. I just said here, the two things you can do to improve. One really important thing in chamber music is studying your score. Okay? Who is playing together at the moment? The melody. This two. No, this two. Those two. Those two, yeah? So let me just do this two. Okay, now, double key. When he does, you go with him. Together, actually, kill together. You see the difference? When you, so you're not just passively say, I have to follow him. You actually can both join. Okay, one more time. Yeah, great. Now continue, continue. So you kill beginning, di da 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 joy. And don't just play di da da joy. Mwah. Come in. Up. Okay, one more time. Come in. Now. Okay. Two together. Yes, I like that already much better. Now, which one? 
one more thing. You know the teeth well enough, right? Do you have to stare at the mistress? Uh, parts of it probably. Okay. Might be able to the first line, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe. I'm trying, uh, so yeah, I'm not sure how much I could do. I try, mean. try it. Do, do. Come on, invite her in. So I'm inviting her for join me, but if I'm doing Q and I'm done, <laughs> you see the difference? She's gonna feel very lonely. All right, one more time, just the top of it. Two together. <laughs> participating in everybody else's part. Now, for you to participate, what does that mean? I feel like I'm the anchor. I'm the yes, you are. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm the foundation. So, now, you want to give them more energy. What do you need to do? Uh, good question. <laughs> good question, man. Um, Play me or just your part. This is, and this is actually the magic of Chandler Music. I'll talk to you a little bit more. Go ahead. <laughs> to move them, you go bum, 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 bum. If you go bum, 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 they have to wait for you to pick mm -hmm. that. You're controlling it. Actually, all of the accompaniment part controls everything. That, if you in any business meeting or whatever, <laughs> which I go to a lot, you will actually notice everybody, if it's a good team, everybody is contributing all the time. It's never a good meeting or a good organization is never top down. I tell you what to do, which is you, follow me. No, it's always coming in, contribute, come on. So let me, I want to hear now the whole thing. Bum, 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 bum. Move them, move them, okay? <laughs> And 
another one. Who had? To, who do you have to lock in? Right there. Da 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 da. Yeah. Let's just do two of them. That this is what I mean about accompaniment part. Just yeah, lock in. Just. <laughs> Yeah, so 
One more time, right there. Can you do? Top. Oh, <laughs> 
have all the detail working on. This is not the very last thing I want to change. Are you counting four or are you counting two? Mm. And what is the set in the beginning? Yeah. It's cut. cut. It's cut. <laughs> <laughs> Darn, right? You actually should count two. Yeah. yeah? So let's start. You do do. It's a different feeling, right? Okay, now we're gonna do since you already fixed up most of the stuff, we do it in big two, and you're gonna find yourself in a much happier place. <laughs> I promise you. Okay, let's do that one more time from the very beginning in two. Right. Uh, something up over there. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what happened? And what did you do? You're uh, doing one bow, yeah. right? And you have the same material. Yeah. You have no, to do the same bow. Yeah. I mean, for train I like me, I was like, okay, <laughs> they haven't talked about this yet, right? So let's go. The rule of finding good bowing are important. I was a viola major, so you can trust me that <laughs> I actually <laughs> now <laughs> am a double major. For many years, I also played the flute. Um, yeah. So the golden rule of bowing is go to the most important place and look at that. See what, at which point of bow you should be. So, on that di ya di da bows. Di ya, di ya, and then di da da da, di da 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 da. On the di da da da, di da 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 da, what do you want to use? Although, yeah? Di da da da, you have da 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 da, di da 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 da, right? And what what is the optimal bow in there? Every every uh, two notes I, I have. Starting down bow. Yes. That's good. Yes. So now same thing. Da 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 da. So if he is going to do uh down bow, da 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 ya da da. Right. So then you have to start uh dun 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 da na. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Or do up bow, and then. I want both of you to end up in the same place. So play da 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 da. So mm -hmm. the down bow? Like up bow. Oh, okay. Bum, 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 so you end up like. But you want, you, you so want one bow. Okay, okay. Because he's doing one bow. So I do that, okay. Got yeah, you got it. You got it. So do the up bow for the. Okay, yeah. It. And then uh, in order to do up bow to have the maximum bow, mm -hmm. bow distribution is important, right? You know, at the maximum bow, I would suggest you somehow work your way through dum bum 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 on the frog. Yeah. So you have more bows to do the crescendo uh, to crescendo. Yeah. yeah. Okay, two things. Tighten your bow. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? I see you pushing it and when you're it's crushing. Yeah, it's a little too loose, so you're going to the wood, so you're afraid to do it, and you don't have a way of doing any crescendo. Now, in order to do the crescendo on that, save your bow, move fast. So when you move fast, what happens? Your bow is too loose, you're hitting the wood, so you don't dare to move fast, so you don't really have a crescendo. Tighten it now. Now. Yeah. From the bottom, D yeah. Do it. Yeah, you immediately hear more sound. Yes, exactly. Now, let me look at this one. Yeah, yeah. it needs to be, a, <laughs> needs to be a little tighter so you have more resistance on your bow. Now, save it, and then slow down. Then you will have a natural crescendo. Just, just you alone. Now move, move. Yeah, exactly. Now you got it. Okay, you got it. Okay, so now don't dun 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 dun. Let me see how you end up. Mm -hmm. Dun bum bum bum. Just you. Oops. Now watch him. With his bow and dun bum 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 bum. Yeah. Okay. Now you see when he, it's not possible for him to really jump because he will have a really, in order to go to the the frog really frog of the bow, he usually end up about this much to the bow. You start the same place. You guys will sound exactly the same. Just as simple as that. It's physics. One more time. When you're watching, da 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 da, catch his bow, same thing, and do the same bow speed, you will have the same I, same kind of sound. Okay, one more thing. Follow. You fall. Come in, come in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Except he's using the first one, down bow, second yeah, one, up bow, so you have to change that. You have to be with him, just like cop, cop and copy. Don't go in there yet. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yes, now, the reason you're not together with him, is you're watching his bow, you're not watching his finger. Yeah? 
So in order to be together, bow is the same finger. Hit the same time as his left hand. Your left hand, same thing, you'll be totally together. Okay, one more time. Somebody, the yum, the boom. I will see immediately. Yeah. So do little tricks like this. We do on stage for, at all time. Every note, we're watching each other like like a hawk. Okay. Now, Lee, your second note. So he, so band note's going to come in. Okay. One more time. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Sometimes it's technical details that you just really need to unify, okay? Because earlier I'm saying, oh, so where's that, where's that hairpin? I can't hear it, and I realized you guys were complete on two different worlds, mm -hmm. okay? So a little thing like that. I know we have only five minutes left. We can go longer if you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, worry. actually, Travis, you were talking about, you want me to talk to them a little bit? If you yeah, have you live, store, live questions? Yeah, live questions. The first one is kind of out there. Like, what is your first musical memory? What is my first musical memory is my dad. My dad was a policeman. So if anybody tells you music is for the elite, they are wrong. My family was very, very poor. My mother sent my father to the flea market to buy a western suit to go to a wedding. My dad, like all men, loves gadget. He came home with no suit. He came home with a, a LP and a, a set, a big stack of LP and a turntable. <laughs> and he played the music with Shahar oh. And then it was Mozart Symphony. And then Beethoven Emperor Concerto. Um, most of violin sonatas, I remember every one of them, and he, a magic flute, mm. and he just played them over and over, and the whole house was just, mm. he, he doesn't play them, he blasts them. <laughs> Our house was like one of those boombox shapes, <laughs> and he loved it so much, and that was my first most exciting musical memory. And my father said, we got to see how this sausage is made, so <laughs> we have to go to concerts. So. No, we have no money. We have to walk 40 minutes to the concert hall. Wow. So for that, my father said, if we walk, we save the bus money, he will buy me an ice cream. Mm -hmm. So I was about eight and a half. Um, and my father walked to the concert hall very hard in mm -hmm. Taiwan. And I remember going to concert hall to watch concert. And I just thought that was the most beautiful thing in the whole wide world. We're very poor, we don't have much money at all, and meat or chicken is only for Chinese New Year's or birthday, okay? So my mother will buy a piece of pork, and you'll have these thin slices, and just have a little flavor for vegetables. And my parents said, my father insists that we have to learn to play music. And I went and auditioned uh, for a gifted and talented program. And I fooled them all. <laughs> I fooled them all. I was I was very I was a outgoing kid. Let me put it that way. I know I have to win the audition to continue my study in music, and I have to do well. So I walk in there with full confidence and say, pretend I'm a great piano, just like I saw on the concert. I fooled them all. I didn't even read music. And I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I learned two pe little pieces. And they thought I really knew. I said, oh, so musical. I come in. They put music in front of me. I said, I, don't, I can't read it. So it's emergency session. Wow. And two years, only technique, nothing. I was not allowed to play any music. Scale, arpeggio, Bach, and etchy. That's it. But anyway, that's my first musical memory. How did you decide on the piano since you said you played flute and the viola? How did um, I decide to play the piano because I love the piano. Mm -hmm. The double major was a requirement, and the orchestra needed the violist. Mm -hmm. 
So, <laughs> right? Every orchestra needs the violas. And we are also required to pick every six months a new instrument because they will prepare us if we want to choose to be conductor mm. uh, or if we want to go to. So the idea is we are double major. Most of us know both keyboard and strings. And the uh, wind instrument, I also play percussion for two years. You can change every six months, mm. but it, it gives you a chance to get to know other instruments, the registry, mm. the learn how to read the score and stuff like that. It was the experimental program only lasted five years mm. with the most ridiculously rigorous demands on all the kids. And the idea is, this is important for all of you, the idea is if you put your mind to it, nothing can stop you. You can is not ever underestimate your own capacity. Mm. And we were taught from very young from that from the school on that five year, five classes. Put your mind to it, work really, really hard, you can conquer anything and don't think you can manage it. No such thing. It's brainwashing, I know, but <laughs> we all believe in it. And so it's a it's extraordinary that five years we, when I entered with 35 kids, we graduated only 13 of us. Wow. And, and because wow. it's so demanding, except five years, when you go back to Taiwan, all my friends are leading all institutions. Mm -hmm. The symphony executive director is my friend. Uh, the opera house management is all in leadership position. So don't underestimate your own potential. Don't ever do that. You can do anything you put your mind to. Next One time. last question. This is something you touched on while talking with them. Um, the senior music majors just turned in a paper. And the topic was, <laughs> how has music or music education affected the non-musical aspects of your life? Yeah. I think my music education, like I described it, there is a basic principle of ethics. Mm -hmm. Work ethics, the basic principle of always achieve as high as possible. You will only stand out if you can do things are better than anybody else around you. That's just the basic mm -hmm. nature, human nature. And another thing that what I learned, I learned that very young, so I know I always have to be the best. I work really hard at that. But, but I was a very obnoxious kid. <laughs> I tell you that right out. I was not the nicest person. I was a big soloist, mm -hmm. hallelujah. I was you know, playing concerto every year. Everybody treated me differently. When I came to the United States, I certainly lost all the connection. I have no idea. My agent and my mother sent me to the US for two years so they can go back and as they say it, this is true, we can charge double for you. I came here, certainly I have no concert to play, and suddenly I realized I had to decide if this is what I want to do. And the next best thing happened to me is I started playing chamber music. Immediately I met the Emerson Quartet. And I realized in the chamber music, all the things I just taught you, all the things I just taught you about cueing, about collaborating, about engagement, about communication, about being aware of all the little detail, I learned it all from playing chamber music. About how to make the best constructive suggestion so nobody's feeling you will get hurt, and everybody can be encouraged and follow you. And that was the most important lesson I ever made learn for myself. If you learn how to read the body language, if you learn how to assess the situation, you can go into, or if you learn how to make good public speaking, mm -hmm. you can use those skills in any situation, any job that you can go in. And so that, that specific skill in chamber music for me is super important. All of the education program at Mount in Menlo in New York, or I train everybody for actually those skills. Not so much of your playing. Playing I can fix, you know. The little thing I show you how to fix stuff, that was just observation, that was just solve problem, finding solution immediately. But what I'm, the larger picture of how you're going to support each other, how you're going to be the nicest friends to everyone in, around you. Therefore, first of all, you're a happier person. And second is everybody will want to work with you. 
And that's chamber music 101. If you're not nice, nobody will want to play with you. <laughs> <laughs> right? So that's, that would be my best advice to you all. Well, thank you very much. Maybe any other questions before? I mean, time well, that was just it. wonderful. I mean, for just every day, and then to hear the kids. They, are, they play so well, right? Yes. 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 That was I'd really say you transformed, but you pulled it out of them. Yay! <laughs> Cheers. I want to you all. Thank you so much. Yeah. Have a great concert. I'm going to watch. <laughs> all right. I'm going to talk. Do, do everything I told you to. Look up, look up. This is, this is boring. She's really pretty. <laughs> she is too, you know? All look up. Be with them. All right? Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much.